Well, we're here to talk about the film that you're taking part in, Moving Stories, yeah. with Battery Dance. And so tell me a little bit about Battery Dance. What is Battery Dance? Battery Dance is a 40-year uh, dance company. Um, does a lot of outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the mission uh, of Battery is uh, social relevance and um, artistic, uh, art, uh, artistically excellence. Mm -hmm. um, and we strive to kind of um, to reach those goals uh, with every program that we actually really do. Mostly we we work as um, cultural ambassadors mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, for America, around the world, and work with uh, people from all, all uh, ages and um, walks of life, mm -hmm. uh, integration, diversity, um, to kind of bridge the humanness that we all, I mean, just the humanness of uh, being with each other, being able to have a conversation with each other, being able to respect each other. And because once, if one can do that, I think we can really go further and live uh, in a harmonious life, I think. You know, knowing the benefits of community, and as it seen you do, and, and you've traveled the world with your art, which is an incredible honor, and I, and I love hearing about it. Um, you know, what is it about this project that continues to inspire you and challenges you as a professional and as a creative? Uh, I think it's the community building aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge of seeing for people, seeing people as who they are and not judging, uh, not judging ahead of time if I see you and actually the only thing that separate people from being strangers it's literally just asking their name. <laughs> if I know your name, you're not a stranger anymore. And that simple common thing that we all share, and everybody wants to be noticed, everybody wants to belong to something or somewhere. And we are all struggling with those things, mm -hmm. yet we are not able, able to verbalize those things or able to actually bridge those things. And by through dance, we, uh, with battery dance, we are able to uh, connect uh, people, we are able to connect communities, we are able to connect um, different worlds in that sense, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, different countries. And because through creative workshops and through dance, we are able to uh, kind of break down the barriers mm -hmm. that we kind of build uh, yeah. as people, we build between us. And by doing this uh, by dancing together we get to know each other and especially for teenagers where that are uh, dealing with uh, self-esteem at that moment and peer pressure is a big thing and then on top of it if these kids or a lot of people uh, that we work with live in underprivileged neighborhood uh, then it becomes uh, a stigma and I think um, what Battery dance. What we do is, we try not to. We try not to uh, play into the stigma that uh, goes on around the world. Like, oh, these people are like this, or these people are like this, and we see people for people, and we connect pe to people as people because I respect you because I want to be respected as well. Absolutely. And unless you give that respect first, you cannot expect that. And that is very important to kind of build the community that we are all, that we all belong to. Right, yeah, you know, when people think of like modern dance and dance academies, they think of this certain prestige. And very well, you know, I understand that. And based upon the talent that it takes to do that, people think, I could never, you know, do that. I, I, that's so tough for me to be able to do. And, you know, what, one thing I've been hearing you talk about is bridging the gap between dancers and dreamers, you know, and, and I love that. And, you know, how would you say an aspiring dancer or somebody who loves this life, loves the idea of this life, how would you instruct them how to get their start? Um, I would say to 
every group that I've ever worked with or anybody just in life is try. Mm -hmm. Dare to try. Just dare to try and just you will surprise yourself. Because it's always easy to, oh no, I cannot do that. You know, like it's the dream or the idea of being able to do something mm -hmm. is always seems so far until you actually start doing it or start trying it. And it's like, oh wow, I didn't know I could do this. Because most of the time when we start with a certain group, um, beginning it's like, oh no, I don't know, I cannot do this. And, and then day two, day three, it starts by, you, you can see in your eyes and in how they talk or how they start all of a sudden, it's like, oh, but if I do this, I can do this and we can. And then all of a sudden you start seeing the inspiration, you start seeing like the idea and the self-esteem that people can, act, that I can actually do this. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the week, after the performance, they cannot believe what they just achieved. And and that just it just started with the idea of just trying and also having people that actually believes in them mm -hmm. and um, providing the environment for that to grow and yeah we definitely to be need to be reminded of that so much more in our daily lives with anything yes you know we, even with something that's not an artistic expression we think like this is so hard can i do this yes Exactly. The answer is yes, you can do it. You yeah, know, it, I, takes, it takes this, it takes the brain. It's all indeed mentally, yeah. and I draw it's all parallel to life. Like, you know, it's like you wake up uh, in the morning, your alarm goes. You're like, oh, no, I don't think I can get up. Well, just you, but you do get up. One you know, foot in front of the one other. One foot in front of, one step at a time. I always say dance is like walking, mm -hmm. step after step. It's literally step after step and before you know it you have like you know like I don't know if I can go to work today and you just take it one step at a time before you know you are at work <laughs> can't do it all at once you exactly know? you know like Rome wasn't built in a day yeah. <laughs> so how do you stay inspired you have such a great attitude about your artwork and and spreading this community for people how do you stay inspired as, a, as an artist just on your own people inspire me mm -hmm. Artists um, and not just artists, but people in general that I work with, like even teenagers, especially that I work with, inspire me a lot because uh, most of the time uh, it's the idea like I cannot do it, and then you see after a week or after a couple of times, once you just even just a moment being with them and you uh, have a, some patience and you just explain to them or you give them a, a little challenge or a little task and they complete it and it's like oh yeah but that was nothing <laughs> and that idea of uh, completing a task at a time and that task adds up and then being a whole um, thing that they then complete and the inspiration part for me is when knowing that okay the, uh, I can do this my way mm -hmm. same thing you're doing, but you do it completely different than I thought that I could have even think of. Okay. But you do exactly, say you complete the same task. That for me is very inspiring because that means I can do it different way. And for me, knowing that you are doing it this way and I'm doing this this way and we are both doing exactly the same thing, oh, I can take what you're doing as well mm -hmm. and add it to me. So then my knowledge just expands. You know, so and then I can also learn from this person. I can learn from this person. So learning from each other only enriches yourself. And I think it becomes almost like selfish thing mm -hmm. because you learn. I mean, I go into workshop and beginning most of the case thing like, oh, I'm there to teach them something. But at the end of the day, when I leave, I have more. <laughs> I've learned much more than they did, I think, mm -hmm. because I learn from all of them and they, they have just one person, just me. And I learned from like 20 to 30 kids. So I have like 30 different baggages <laughs> and they only got one in yeah. a sense. But if they, uh, most kids learn from each other too. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, we keep inspiring each other in that sense. So and for me, that's really where the inspiration lies. That's yeah. beautiful, that yeah. is beautiful. You, you broadened the minds of some, some kids today. 
at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston with a screening of your film, and I'm sure they had a lot of fun and fascinating questions for you. What was that experience today like? Oh, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. It was really, really awesome. Um, and, I mean, in the morning, seeing kids come into a movie and afterwards having so much question, then also knowing that they really got engaged, uh, they really got engaged with the film and were really moved by the film as well. Mm -hmm. um, as it was very inspiring to see that because even for me to see the movie over and over again, it's it's refreshing and it's very much like, oh my God, this actually really happened. <laughs> and as well as even to see some of the background story that sometimes I, I don't get to mm -hmm. know from some of the kids, which is sometimes heartbreaking. And because I interact with them in, in a classroom setting and not necessarily in their home. Mm -hmm. And so seeing, for example, even where they live and how uh, their neighborhoods, that even if you walk through, it's a very different sense. If you pass through, then actually they inviting you in there. And I think they invited the camera in there and they actually showed a little bit more of how they, what their life uh, is like there. And knowing that kind of uh, stories helps me kind of cater better to them because then I know like, okay, they are struggling. Maybe they woke up, maybe X, Y, and Z. I cannot just push my ideas down their throat. Mm -hmm. I should listen to them more to see what they need to better themselves yes. because that is something that is very important. You know, as a teacher, you go into the classroom and pardon my French, but you're shoving your knowledge into, uh, on, into the students. Sure. And you want them to understand what you're saying, but for for other people to understand what you're really saying, you need to understand what they need to know, what they need, so that you can actually share. Because it's a sharing thing, mm -hmm. you know. If I don't know you and I'm just here and I'm just telling <laughs> some, I'm telling you something, you be like, what? I don't need that <laughs> now, right now, but. If I know you a little bit better, I'll be, I'll be able to tell you something that you could use mm -hmm. in this case uh, that will help you or engage you better in a way uh, to get to know me. So, you, you know, you have a, a quite engaging teaching philosophy with a lot of ideas and really brings in people to your craft. But, you know, artistic expression can be a hypnotic experience, even, even watching a film watching somebody dance, watching a performance. Um, but, you know, how does performing make you feel? What, ha what, what happens to Clement while you're dancing? Like, how, do you lose yourself in your art? How do you feel? Yeah. Um, I think, see, as a performer, when, when, when I'm on stage, it's, it's something like you're able to scream to the world Everything that uh, you feel at that moment, um, and it's almost like it's kind of a bit selfish. Whether they get it or don't get it, you're just saying whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most be and most people want to see that. Also, I think uh, the audience comes in and they are ready to listen. You know, so when you're uh, they're ready to watch you, they're ready to listen. So as an artist, when I'm on stage, I'm. I'm able to tell a story um, that that is happening to me, uh, experience that I'm going through right now, or something that maybe frustrates me, or something that I'm very, very happy about. And I'm able to put all of that in my artistry. Um, I, I'm not so, I feel like I'm not so good in words, finding the right mm -hmm. words to express. Uh, my thought most of the time, also because I have multilingual thing sure. going on, and sometimes I would think of something and I'm I'm speaking in English and I'm thinking it of in different language. Okay, interesting. And in in the other language that I'm thinking it of, I can express it better. That's but in English I can't find quite exactly mm -hmm. same word to match it. But when you're dancing or when I'm dancing. I don't, I'm, I don't struggle with those things. 
I can just express it however I want it in like my thought goes in three languages constantly. Mm -hmm. Like I can make one sentence in in three different four languages. And that's for me, it makes so much sense. Sure. <laughs> but if I say to to you right now, you'll be like, I miss couple <laughs> words of these. And and in when I'm on stage, that sentence is very clear to become very clear to you because I'm not verbally saying mm -hmm. it to you. Well Clement Mensa, thank you for your time. This is great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.